So, be honest. How many of you actually forgot, with all the hype waiting for Vich to drain our quartz dry, that we are getting a free 5 star to choose this 6th anniversary on Fate Grand Order NA? I actually didn't even remember until this week. So, if you are like me and are unsure of who to pick, I'll be here to help guide you on the best pick you can make for your account. I'll also add an interesting note that you can pick Story Locked Non-Limited 5 Star Servants, which for those of you who don't know what that means, they're servants that will never spook you on a raid up banner. They only spook you if you roll on the story banner. Really, it's a dumb mechanic, but it does add a higher rarity to some of these servants that you will most likely never pull if you only go for event banners. So it may further entice you to go for them, as it's one of your only chances to get some of these Storylock servants. Now, let's go down the list starting with the savers. Starting off, we have the Bad Civilization Destroyer herself. And honestly, she's just okay. There's really nothing in her kit that Mordred or Artoria can't do better. Other than having higher debuff resistance and NP damage up, but really, compared to the other utility that the other two servants have, she really doesn't stand out much. Ah, and now we come to the face of the entire Fate franchise, Artoria herself. And she's a very powerful AoE Saber. She's got a skill that lets her change all of her cards to Buster for a turn, She's got bitch compatibility, and overall, she's very good at generating her own stars thanks to one of her skills. Though so she's still very powerful, and she's more likely to get buffs considering she's the face of the franchise. So, if you need a powerful AoE Saber, or just a 5-star Saber in general, or if you just really love Artoria, then I would say go for her. The same can basically be applied to Mordred as well. She basically has a near identical kit as her father, but that doesn't change how effective she is. The only difference in them is the fact that Mordred's NP deals more damage against Arthur enemies, and she has more of a focus on one turn buster crit damage. So she does have that. Really, it comes down to who you like a bit more. Honestly, I lean more towards Mordred myself. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. Now it's time to talk about the archers. Starting with Orion. And honestly, she's probably one of the weakest archers on the list, as well as five stars in general. She's basically just a slightly more powerful Uriel, and I really can't recommend her in the slightest, unless you really like the character. Have no fear, students. Because I am here! Next up on the chopping block is Napoleon, and unfortunately, he's just an inferior Gilgamesh in about every way. He can generate some crit stars, but he's got nothing in the fact of any kind of crit star absorption skill. So, unfortunately, I can't really recommend him. Now we come to the Lancers, and we've got a pretty big and bouncy one to talk about. And that would be Artoria Lancer, who basically has a 50% NP charge, AoE Buster NP, and she's Vich compatible. And that's really all you need to know about her. She deals pretty high damage, so if you're in the market for a Buster Looper Lancer, he's definitely got you covered. Enkidu is quite the unique case when it comes to a Lancer, as he has a mixed-matched quick deck and a Buster NP. However, his skill set is one of the best survivalists in the game. I've had many matches where he was my last servant and he was able to defeat the boss even though it was a pretty hard challenge quest. So if you need someone as a last stand servant, as well as someone that can deal pretty high 
single target in P damage, as well as paralyzing divine enemies, then Enkidu is what you would want. He's a very powerful Lancer. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Karna, who isn't Vich compatible, and his overall skill set is just kind of all over the place and doesn't really synergize that well. He does have a powerful AoE and P that's Buster, so there is that, but I would say he's probably the weakest of the five-star Lancers here. Budimonte is another decent AoE quick servant. He doesn't have very much in terms of helping her loop with Scotty, but she does have a guts and a way to boost her arts and quick effectiveness, so it helps her to loop in longer battles. But let's be real, there's only one reason you would want to choose this character. And hey, who are we to judge? Some people get their dicks hard by seeing Muramasa's epic NP, and other people's dicks get hard at seeing Budimonte's fat jiggling butt just constantly doing her thing. Moving on to the riders, we have Achilles, who has AoE quick looping potential with Scotty, as well as some challenge quest viability in a taunt for himself as well as applying invincibility to himself. Overall, a very good, powerful, quick AoE rider. Up next, we have a bit of an interesting servant, basically a five-star version of Marie. She's able to apply invincibility to herself, able to charm the enemy. She does have an NP charge, so she does have that as well, but probably one of the most unique things about her is the fact that she has a giant mech to attack for her. So, if you want a mummy that can punch things with a giant mech, then Europa is for you. Now, we got a real powerhouse here. Ozymandias is widely considered to be one of the strongest single-target riders, able to deep up the enemy's defense with his Noble Phantasm, as well as buff your own team with Charisma and a 20% NP charge. His Imperial Privilege is a bit on the random side, but if you use it in combination with his NP charge skill, you can basically get it all the time. And he's only going to be getting stronger with a recent buff. So if you need a powerful single target rider, then Ozzy is one of the best picks you can make. Up next we have Quetzalcoatl, who to this day is still a very decent single target rider DPS. He has a pretty good charisma that gives you crit stars. He has a targetable guts that also gives a buster enhancement. And she has a good crit star absorption skill. And she's also able to seal the enemies in P with their Noble Phantasm. He actually has a very powerful single target in P that's Buster as well. Just make sure to keep her away from certain Shodas. Wait, this isn't, uh, is it, this isn't Dragon May? Oh, my bad. Next question. Up next, we got the Destroyer of Pelvises, Queen Meb who's got a very, very strong anti-male niche, and also has a very good way to reliably charge her NP per turn. She also has a very powerful charm, and her NP also reduces the enemy's mental debuff resistance, which basically means they're prime for being charmed the very next turn. And we can't forget to talk about her signature Noble Phantasm, where she basically takes you into her chariot, and then you are accompanied by death via Snoo Snoo. Now, if you're into something like that, I know I am, then Meb is for you. Up next, we got Francis Drake herself, who has a very powerful AoE NP 
which will always guarantee you a hefty amount of stars. She's also got a very good NP generation due to her skills. And she also has a 50% NP charge, as well as a recent buff giving her Buster performance. Voyager of the Storm isn't all that powerful anymore compared to what it used to be. But when it comes to AoE Buster NPs that you can loop with, She's definitely one of the strongest riders in that regard. Up next, it's time to talk about the casters. Starting with Princess Anastasia herself. For starters, she's got a 50% MP charge. She's able to possibly stun the enemy. She can seal the enemy's skills with her NP, And she can greatly reduce the enemy's debuff resistance. So as you can see, she's very debuff dependent. So if you're into that, then she might be for you. Although if you have if you already have Sig at NP5 from one of the prior events, you can actually pass on her. But otherwise, she will fill your needs for a AoE Arts NP looper. Next up we have Sun Goku whose NP hits enemies really, really hard, and they have no way to avoid it because her NP ignores defensive buffs. She also has a way to taunt for herself and increasing your overall team's attack, as well as NP generation and critical star rate. So she's very good at performing a number of skill sets. But again, you mainly use her for her 80% NP charge and just hitting the enemy really, really hard. Sherazade like is a bit of an interesting case. She has a anti-king trait noble phantasm that is AoE Arts. However, quite a bit of her kit is very defensive focus, including being able to drain the enemy's NP gauge, as well as charging her own very slightly. Able to charm the enemy and increasing her own defense greatly. However, her most unique skill is being able to apply an entire guts to the party. This is a skill that Iris Veal has as part of her Noble Phantasm. So she's very much a weird servant when it comes to her kit. Very unique, at least. So if you want a servant that really damages King Trait enemies and has a little bit of fan service for you, then go with Sherazade. If you care anything about the strength of your account and you don't have Waver, you will pick him this guaranteed ticket. Even with my bias towards Tamamo, which I will talk about soon, Waver is easily the best choice to go for. An overall 50% NP charge to one servant, crit damage buffs, attack buffs, defensive buffs, and his Noble Phantasm is able to reduce the enemy's NP charge, as well as possibly stunning them and reducing their defense, he is one of the greatest supports in the entire game. Uh, <laughs> ご主人様だって人間ですもの昔から人間は人間を選ぶんです。どんなに尽くしても狐耳は狐耳私は手よく利用されて最後には毛皮にされちゃう運命なんです。なんでほっといてください。ご主人様の邪魔はしませんからど
for far too long. I've been playing since around the first year of FGO, and before there was Merlin, before I had my own waiver, before Castoria, before Scotty, before any of the big supports, you know who I was always bringing to the bigger battles? Tamamo. She has Arts Effectiveness Enhancements. She is able to heal the team as well as reduce their cooldown, which, let me tell you, I sure use that even for non-Arts teams. That skill cooldown is just way too effective. She has good survivability, she is able to drain the enemies and P charge, and she's able to defend herself from harsher attacks. Sure, she may not be able to NP e charge your allies like others can, except with her ultimate, but she's absolutely amazing in longer content, and people just disrespect Mekon way, way too much. She is absolutely precious. She deserves to have her ears and fox combed with the most precious of love. And just because Castoria exists, it doesn't mean that she's no longer efficient. If anything, she's one of Castoria's best partners. I use both of them at the same time. It's better than a double Castoria for a boss fight. She is an absolutely amazing art support and enables my Castoria to do absolutely bonkers things with any art servant I wish. And if you already have Waver, then Tamamo is easily the second choice to go for. Screw the haters, Tamamo is amazing, and you really want her in your Caldea. Mic drop! Moving on to the Assassins, we basically have Diet Scotty that you can get at home. Her Noble Phantasm increases the quick and buster effectiveness of all allies, as well as increasing their max HP and giving them a sizable chunk of defense all for three turns. Her skills basically buff the entire party's crit damage by 50% for three turns, which is no small feat. She has a targetable NP charge and a way to remove all enemy buffs as well as reducing their defense. Overall, she's got a bit of a weird kit, but if you give her an NP gain CE and spam her NP as much as possible with your Quick Servant, as well as whatever other support you bring with her, because she's not enough to carry alone, she's actually pretty good in certain comps. Very awkward to use, though. Up next, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite murder daughter, Jack the Ripper. Jack has a very basic kit, which has three quick cards, and she's able to bleed out stars like nothing else. She has a evasive, as well as a quick buff on one skill, which can be a little bit awkward. She does have a skill that lets her heal the your own team slightly, and it has a very low cooldown. And she's also able to remove enemy buffs. She has a very basic kit, but if you're in need of a single target assassin that deals heavy damage to females, then Jack is who to go for, especially if you don't have Kama. Up next, we got Mr. One Punch Man himself, Old Man Lee, whose entire gimmick basically folds around he hits you really, really hard in one turn. He does have a bit of debuff immunity and a charisma for himself that lasts three turns, but he's basically a one-trick pony of dealing heavy damage in one turn, and then he can't do much else. He does have a uh, instant death chance, so there is that, but honestly, I'd say Jack is better. Up next, it's time to talk about the Berserkers. Starting with Vlad, a single target arts NP Berserker that actually has pretty good NP gain with one of his skills. 
and is able to NP drain and charge his own NP. But one of the most unique things about him is his defense is actually rather high for one of his skills, and he's able to stack multiple guts on himself with his third skill, making him the second Berserker able to do something like that next to Hercules. So if you need a single target Arts Berserker, he's gotcha. Up next we have one of the most powerful Berserkers in the game, who Alter, who has a two hit evasion on a rather short term cooldown which also gives him quite a bit of defense, able to reduce the enemy's crit chance, and he has incredibly high damage and survivability thanks to his guts. And a recent NP upgrade will allow him to ignore all enemies' defensive buffs with his NP. He is easily one of the most powerful berserkers in the game, and if you need someone to carry you through the first part of the game, he will absolutely do that. One of the highest recommendations here. Up next on the chopping block, we've got Zhang Yu, who... I really don't know what to make of this guy. He's got a triple buster deck, and is able to deal out very high crit damage in one turn, and he only has one hit of evasion. He's able to deal out very high damage, but his survivability is very bad. And he has a quick AoE NP that doesn't match the rest of his deck? Honestly, I really cannot recommend him. He's probably one of the weaker picks here. Next. Oh, there is one reason to pick him. So you're able to give you may run his uh, Robo Horsecock. Up next, we have a servant with great skills completely destroyed by being a Berserker. He's able to give your team debuff immunity, heal them, he has good defense and good attack against humanoid enemies, and she's able to enhance a servant's buster effectiveness, as well as giving them 20 crit stars in one turn. Now, the problem is, she's a Berserker, and she will die with one crit. One of her most powerful assets is her Noble Phantasm, which reduced the enemy's NP strength and attack for one turn, to the point of making their Noble Phantasm deal basically zilch damage. If only she wasn't a Berserker, I could actually recommend her. If she was anyone else, I could. Up next we have the Extra Class Servants to talk about, starting with John Ark. Her first skill allows her to generate a bunch of crit stars for the team. Her second skill lets her reduce the enemy's NP damage, as well as greatly reducing their defense once it's upgraded. And her third skill has a very high chance to paralyze a servant-type enemy. Otherwise, if they're not a servant, it's basically useless. She has a triple arts deck, and her Noble Phantasm actually increases the defense of your team, as well as being able to give them invincibility for one turn, and removes all enemy debuffs. So she's a very, very powerful defensive servant that if you don't have Castoria, can definitely fill in that role for you. Up next we got Ilyas Viel von Einsburn, who brings her bear to absolutely maul on the enemies. When it comes to being a single target alter ego, she absolutely devastates the competition. Her arts NP, as well as her double arts deck, and having a very high NP gain and high amount of hits on her cards, allows her to be able to loop her NP rather easily. She also has an NP charge, as well as a way to possibly gain a number of crit stars. Her invincibility skill also buffs your teammates for 500 defense for three turns. And if you're fighting a dragon enemy, her NP has a very high chance to reduce their NP gauge. So when it comes to being an alter ego, he's definitely one of the strongest out there. Last but probably least, 
we have Jinako, which I wish I could say very good things about her, but honestly, her kit is kind of just all over the place. She's got incredibly low attack, but a very thick HP, and she has a taunt, she has MP charge, but she's kind of like a jack of all trades when it comes to things, and none of those things she does particularly well. And it doesn't help that you can grab regular Moon Cancer BB from the Rare Prism Shop, who is basically just better than her. So honestly, she's one of the lowest tiers when it comes to my recommendations, but she gets an S rank in Wife Ability. So if you choose her, you're basically choosing her for her personality, which, hey, go you. And now, we're at the end of the video. Here's my overall rankings for everyone. Feel free to pause the video, but I must emphasize, if you really don't have Waver, he should be the one you pick. He just offers so much value to any account that doesn't have him, even if you have the other major supports. Waver just adds so much. And of course, if you don't have Waver, then Tamamo is definitely your next best pick, if you really like Arts Team. Thank you so very much for watching to the end of the video. I hope that my guide was able to help you to better select your free 5 star. But remember always, it's better to go with who you waifu slash husbando the most over anything else. Because at the end of the day, it's a single player game. I hope you will consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content like this. And hey, leave a comment below telling me your thoughts on the video, as well as telling me who you are rolling for. Share this video to your friends to help it do better. And hey, maybe consider joining my Ko-fi to support me, or joining my Discord. I am really trying to hit that 1000 sub mark so I can finally become a YouTube partner and add fun little emotes to my stream. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Oh, and I hope your Vich rolls go well. Bye!